The circulating nurse must be an RN who is fully trained in sterile technique. This nurse is regarded as clean but not sterile and is charged with observing the practices of correct sterile technique throughout the procedure. Should a breach in a sepsis occur, the circulating nurse, who is responsible for overseeing sterility, is charged with immediately notifying the surgeon and team members, then taking action to correct this breach and prevent further contamination. The Association of Perioperative Registered Nurses has established standards and recommended practices as guidelines to assist the surgical team in achieving the highest possible level of technical skill and surgical asepsis. These guidelines include seven principles. Principle 1 states that scrubbed persons function within a sterile field. This means that in addition to appropriate hand preparation, clean scrubs, head covers, shoe covers, and masks, these individuals wear sterile cover gowns and gloves and remain close to the sterile field. They must not come in direct contact with non-sterile surfaces, equipment, or team members. During the procedure, they also wear eye protection, and if facial hair is present outside the confines of the mask, this must also be covered. Principle 2 states that sterile drapes are used to create a sterile field. Sterile drapes minimize the transmission of microorganisms from non-sterile to sterile areas. The patient, furniture, and equipment included within the sterile field are all draped, leaving only the surgical site exposed. It is important to remember that once placed, these drapes should not be moved. Only the top surface, that is the surface above table or waist height, is considered sterile. Rearranging drapes can mean that a portion of the drape not considered sterile is moved up into the sterile field, compromising the sterility of the sterile field. Principle 3 states that all items used within a sterile field must be sterile. Sterile and non-sterile equipment and supplies must never be mixed, and if the protective cover of any sterile package has been compromised, it must be considered contaminated and not be used. Facility policy may allow a dropped item to be used for the current procedure if it has an impervious outer wrapper that remains intact, but it must not be returned to the shelf for later use. If a dropped item does not have an impervious wrapper, or if this wrapper has been damaged, the pack must be returned for reprocessing and a new package obtained. Principle 4 states that all items introduced onto a sterile field should be opened, dispensed, and transferred by methods that maintain sterility and integrity. Principle 5 states that a sterile field should be maintained and monitored constantly. This includes preparing it as close to the beginning of the procedure as possible. Left unobserved, the field is at risk from airborne contaminants, insects, liquids, and inadvertent contamination by other personnel. Principle 6 states that all personnel moving within or around a sterile field should do so in a manner which maintains the sterile field. All scrubbed personnel should remain close to the center of the field, which is the patient. Moving into the non-sterile area of the OR, or standing so you cannot observe the field or touching anyone or any surface while changing places with another individual, can all result in contamination of the field. Finally, Principle 7 states that policies and procedures for maintaining a sterile field should be written, reviewed annually, and readily available within the practice setting.